Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Mark Willard, and we appreciate you joining us today at Green Home Systems. We're speaking with the Managing Director of Green Home Systems, Robbie Abair, and Daniel Glazer, the Regional Sales Manager at Emphase, which is Green Home Systems Manufacturer, providing micro inverters and battery storage. Welcome to everybody. How's it going, Mark? Going really, Thank really you. good. Robbie, why don't we start with you and let us know how did your partnerships with Enphase originate? Well, Enphase has a reputation in the industry for pro providing the most reliable and highest quality inverters uh, in the market today. And so for us, it was a no brainer. And uh, at GHS, Green Home Systems, uh, we pride ourselves on advising homeowners on using the very best products possible to ensure that their um, solar experience and storage experience um, uh, goes as well as, uh, as can be. Um, also, after considering several other options, because there are other options, uh, we chose Enphase for the reliability and durability, as well as their unmatched system architecture, software, and customer support. So when we did the deep dive, uh, it wasn't hard for us to land on Enphase. Uh, now, Daniel, hello to you. Uh, over the past few years, you know, Enphase has captured a, a major percentage of the marketplace for inverters and storage. What would you say sets you apart from your competitors? Yeah, it's a great question. And I also wanted to just um, also introduce my colleague, uh, Tony Vernetti. He's on the line as well. And he's the superstar rock star on our team for doing th these type of videos. You can find his face all over our website um, with really good training and educational materials. So he'll be helping me out with this presentation here today. Um, but great to answer your question. Yeah, I mean, it really boils down to a lot of what Robbie touched on. Uh, we focused exclusively on reliability, um, quality and support. And, you know, reliability and quality, we're on our eighth generation microinverter. Uh, there's not too many companies, if any, out there that can um, stay, say that they're on the eighth generation. So it's a phenomenal place to be as far as reliability goes. And we're really focusing on the whole home energy management system. So not only are we looking at inverters, batteries, but we're looking at elect the full electrification of the home. So this includes EV charging. And there's talk of vehicle to grid charging, vehicle to home charging. That's going to be a big part of our future. Um, in addition to smart appliances and just overall making that smart home come to reality and work seamlessly with the solar and storage and EV charging infrastructure that we're building. Tony, anything to add to that? I think I'll just um, want to emphasize, I mean, the, the question you asked had to do with how we earn so much market share. And I think the two main reasons for that are our dedication to superior customer support. Um, you know, there are gonna be challenges when systems are installed and sellers and inevitably will run into some technical issues and need help. Um, and when you call the support number for a company, you don't wanna be on hold for an hour or two trying to get the help you need. So we've worked really hard at increasing the staff and customer service. So when you call in phase with a question, you can get a hold of a human being in less than two minutes. And that is really uh, much better than as, as far as I've heard from any, uh, compared to our competitors in the industry. So customer service and then reliability, which we've, we've talked about, just um, you know, the fewer issues that customers have with our equipment, uh, the happier they're gonna be. Uh, that's always a comforting thing when you can, uh, we can get a person. Uh, that's always the goal, I know that. <laughs> Uh, Robbie, what was it about Enphase that makes them such an attractive option, both for Green Home Systems as a company, as well as for your customers? Well, like Tony had just mentioned, the support and reliability from Enphase, and Dan, for that matter, the support and reliability from Enphase is unmatched. Um, also, their unique architecture with a distributed AC coupled system provides the major benefits of having no single point of failure as do their uh, as do their as their competitors do, and this is a big deal, and it uh, leads to an increased kilowatt hour production with the system. So, um, yeah, in phase in phase has uh, been everything we hope they would be. Daniel, I know some of your competitors feature optimizers or, or single inverters in regards to 
converting sunlight to AC power for the home. How do micro inverters work and, and how are they different and, and a better option? Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, this also kind of circles back to how we've, you know, really ramped up our market share and why people continue to choose Enphase is the way that AC architecture is, is it eliminates a single point of failure. So in traditional solar systems or some of our competitors out there, there is a string inverter or a DC inverter, and that is a single point of failure. So that means that when that product has any issue, whether that's you know right out of the box or whether that's year 10 or year 20, um, the entire system is, is down. And so with Enphase, because we have multiple microinverters, there's one under each solar panel, uh, if and when one of those microinverters fails or has an issue, the rest of the system is not affected. So for example, on this slide, you can see here on the right would be an Enphase system. And you can see there's 12 microinverters shown there. So when one of those fails or has an issue, the other 11 are still up and running. That homeowner is still producing 92% of the energy that they normally would. And there's not a complete system failure. So it's really reliable because you know these are power electronics and just like a cell phone or laptop there will be a come a point in time in the future where there can be some issues or cause product failures down the line so you want to make sure you have resiliency reliability and by having a no single point of failure you can simply replace that one individual microinverter if it needs to be replaced and you're back up and running again very low maintenance low cost very, very nice. Now, Robbie, when it, when it comes to batteries, do, do homeowners need a battery with their solar system? Well, it be, in the beginning, you know, for, you know, the last uh, several years, it's been mainly uh, a discussion centered around severe weather events and grid reliability. And there's still a need for that, obviously, that will always be uh, the number one uh, purpose for storage and batteries. However, in California, where some providers, a handful of providers, utility companies are moving away from NEM 2.0, it's net metering as they know it today. And uh, in the middle of April, they're switching over to NEM 3.0, which essentially means if you're not home to consume all the power that you're generating with your solar system during the day, that excess production goes onto the grid. And unlike 2.0, where you can just pull it back off and use it whenever you want at a one for one. Uh, uh, and get one for one credit the utility is now going to keep that power and sell it back to you at retail and most people most homes in america they're using two-thirds of their power at night when they're not you know because they're off at school the kids are at school and they're and the parents are at work uh and so <laughs> this is a severe roi hit that the homeowner is taking and so the solution uh would be to you have to get batteries, not just for storage, but to deal with the ROI and to deal with the downgrading your interconnection policy so that you can take all the excess that you generated during the day. And instead of pushing it back onto the grid, you charge your batteries and then cycle your batteries every night and use that power versus pulling uh, what should have been your energy back off the grid and paying retail for it. And, you know, we sell solar in over 20 states, sell and install solar in over 20 states around the country. And so throughout the country, it's not just California, year over year, the Public Utilities Commission in each state is allowing these utility companies to get away with downgrading homeowners' uh, interconnection policies. So more and more batteries are not just about storage anymore. It's an ROI issue. It's a being able to actually uh, uh, contain and use and store your own excess gener uh, uh, production during the day that you weren't able to use in real time. So that way you um, are not having forced to then pay retail to buy your own power back, which is an absurd idea. And uh, it's unbelievable that utilities even get away with this, but you know, here we are. So Daniel and Tony, uh, if, if homeowners are not sure they want a battery now, but then may want to add one later, is, is that an option? I'll go ahead and take that one, uh, Dan. Yeah, so under my understanding, under the new NEM 3.0 rules that are going to go into effect in April, if you get solar before April 14th, 
and then want to add a battery a year later, you're not going to be forced to switch over to NEM 3.0. You'll still be able to stay under NEM 2.0. So in that sense, it's not critical to get a battery immediately. Um, but that said, if you're going to be under NEM 3.0, your system doesn't get, you don't apply for interconnection or get installed after mid-April, you really do want to have a battery for all the, the reasons Robbie just mentioned. Um, to kind of sum it up, after mid-April, solar plus a battery is actually going to have a shorter payback period than solar by itself. So even though the battery might add significant cost to your system project, you know, the, the, the solar system, it's going to pay for itself more quickly than solar panels alone because of the fact you can store that really valuable energy in the battery instead of feeding it back to the grid for pennies on the dollar. So Daniel, I mean, I think that's what everyone is interested in, right? That that process of getting uh, of having it pay for itself. So, is there a means that allows customers to kind of track and and monitor how their system is working? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got one of the leading apps uh, and systems available. It's right available on an iPhone or Android. There's also a web interface, and for any homeowner or any industry professional that wants to try it out. You can simply go onto the app store, download it. And then at the very bottom, there's a button that says experience the app. And that's running off of a demo system that we have set up. And you can change the settings, see how the battery's charging, discharging. And it's a really clean, uh, easy to read view that shows you exactly what the home is doing at that moment. And also allows you to see kind of what has happened historically. And I did want to also just uh, mention too, you know, on, on the topic of adding storage later, you know, one of the things that Enphase has been really great about and, and really what we focused on is having the ability to add on to systems later and not having to ideally rework the entire system. So what I mean by that is we really strive to minimize uh, the number of components in a system by itself. And we've really tried to make things back as backwards compatible as possible. So um, if somebody did want to add a battery a year from now, five years from now, and they have an Enphase system, uh, we will provide you know, a very easy, uh, cost-effective way to do that, no matter how far down the line that decision is made. Very good. Now, Robbie, back to you. We, we've heard you in the media before discussing the effect that the increase in electric vehicles is going to also come along with an increase in the demand for solar. Does your relationship with Enphase specifically address that? Uh, yes. Um, with Enphase's acquisition last year of one of the leading EV charging companies in the U.S., they're called Clipper Creek, we're well poised for success um, in, in the future uh, along with uh, Enphase. Also, um, as you may have seen, Enphase announced a bi-directional EV charging um, component last week, which will appear, uh, uh, which will be a major component, I should say, to back up power and resiliency in the future uh, overall. Um, I just wanna say, if I can just, um, just touch on what you were talking about um, early last year, when you and I got together and we were um, yeah. doing a video, we were just talking about the fact that Hey, listen, because of the amount of people moving to electric cars at the rate that they're moving to electric cars, um, you know, due to the geopolitical situation, gas prices, et cetera, et cetera, inflation, you know, and so on, uh, utility rates are going to go up at uh, never before seen levels. And we made that video last February, and that's exactly what happened last year. The average home had their utility rates nationally go up by like 25%. Where, whereby typically 15 years prior to that, average utility increases year over year were like 6%. So that's exactly what happened. And we talked about it literally in, I think that was February or March. And so what's gonna happen is consumers, you, I, all of us, we're gonna be forced to pay for all the infrastructure and transformer uh, overhauls to deal with the, to help the utilities pay for the, um, uh, deal with the demand for electric cars. And so this all ties into storage, PV in general, you know, the, 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 the rising cost of uh, energy. And so we're getting to a point whereby, you know, there's really no way to justify not going solar anymore. And, and for that matter, uh, adding storage. This is kind of where we are in the world today. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a big statement. Now, um, Daniel, you know, we're, we're frequently hearing about power outages all over and, and for a variety of reasons, of course, fires and storms or falling trees, rolling blackouts, what have you. Uh, tell us how Enphase provides a complete solution for maintaining power to the home under any of these circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we, we've been developing and, and providing uh, storage solutions for quite some time now. And currently we're on our second generation uh, battery product, but we provide an entire backup solution. And as you can see on this slide here, these are the various levels of backup we can provide. So you've got your solar only option, so that's no backup. We've got an industry leading technology called sunlight backup, and that's providing backup power directly from your solar panels to power your home in the event of an outage without a battery. And then we've got a home essentials and full energy independence. The so home essentials is just the minimal items that you wanna keep backed up during an outage. Things like that might be a refrigerator, internet connection, et cetera. And then full energy independence is more of a full partial home backup where you can do a lot more. If you have a bigger house, want to back up your entire, all the rooms in your house and various other items. So we provide kind of a, a very wide spectrum and we've got a, a very um, scalable system. So we don't lock you into a certain system size. That's the great thing about the AC architecture is you can add on as time goes on, as your needs increase, your family size grows, um, you know, you add electric vehicles like we were just talking about. We always give you the option of adding additional solar panels if you need more power from the roof and then additional uh, batteries and storage capacity if you need that as well. Um, Tony, I'll let you chime in too. Did, did I miss anything there as far as our, our backup capabilities? I think I just add a add on um, or elaborate, I guess, on a couple of features that we offer that are pretty unique compared to our competitors. Uh, one of those we call sunlight jumpstart. So uh, typical battery and solar systems, when they're coupled together, the solar system basically depends on the battery during a grid outage in order for it to work. If the battery is, say they are disconnected from the grid and that battery gets critically low, it can get to a point where it's unable to start the solar up and recharge the battery. And that would be a disaster if you're without power for, you know, extended period of time for like five days or two weeks, which is happening to a lot of people in places like California and Texas with severe weather. Um, so Enphase's solution there is to take advantage of the unique quality of the IQ8, our newest microinverter. It can actually form the microgrid with the solar panels without the battery. So if you end up, if you're a homeowner and you end up in that situation where the battery is, is totally depleted overnight, perhaps even just by accident, by leaving your air conditioning on, the next morning, the solar can start up without the help of the battery. So the solar starts itself and then can recharge the battery, provided there's sunshine, of course. So, you know, again, for, for those parts of the country where they have prolonged outages of many days, that's a huge advantage that Enphase has. Uh, we also offer more sophisticated control over the electrical loads. It does require some additional parts, but our system can automatically turn off large electrical loads that could either deplete the system of energy quickly or could potentially overload the system and cause it to crash. It's very common with things like air conditioners, uh, large, other large electrical appliances. So if we can control those loads, that system is just gonna be much more resilient and reliable. Well, guys, Great stuff. Uh, Daniel, Tony, Robbie, thank you so much. I got to say, it's been just a real eye opener on how going solar along with Enphase's industry leading components, really the ideal setup, I think, for today's homeowners to save money uh, while also providing efficient and reliable energy. So thank you so much and great job. Thanks again, Mark. Nice seeing you. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thanks Happy for having us, guys. It's been nice a pleasure. To see you. Nice to see you again, Dan. Nice to meet you, Tony. Take care.